Have you ever thought why transmission towers are built so tall? Or why those wires in the sky sometimes look like they are hanging loosely and sometimes tight? Well, these are not just random design choices. They are carefully decided by engineers. And today, we are going to explore the mechanical principles behind overhead transmission lines. Let's start with tower height. You might have noticed that in some areas the towers are really tall, while in others, they are relatively shorter. Why is that? The height mainly depends on the span length, meaning the distance between two towers. If the span is longer, the tower needs to be taller to keep enough clearance from the ground. But here's the fun fact. Making towers unnecessarily tall is not only costly, but also makes them more vulnerable to wind pressure. So, engineers have to balance between cost, safety, and performance. Now let me ask you, when you see transmission towers near your hometown, do you feel they are unnecessarily tall or perfectly designed? Share in the comments, I'd love to know. Next comes conductor clearance to ground. Imagine if those power lines were hanging too low. That would be scary, right? That's why at the time of erection, the clearance is kept between 6 and 12 meters depending on voltage and local conditions. But here's the tricky part. Wires expand when the temperature rises, so the clearance reduces in hot weather. In some cases, engineers even consider conditions like ice loading, where ice deposits increase the weight of the wire and pull it down further. So, clearance is not fixed. It actually varies with the seasons. Moving on to sag and tension. This is honestly one of the most fascinating topics. So whenever we stretch a rope tightly, it sags less. But if we loosen it, the sag increases. The same thing actually happens with transmission line conductors. The tension in the conductor depends on wind, ice, and temperature. In fact, there's a beautiful relationship between sag and temperature. You'll find that as temperature increases, tension decreases, and sag increases. That's why engineers use what are called stringing charts to decide the right balance while laying down conductors. Next time when you see wires hanging loosely in summer, remember, it's not a fault, it's just physics at work. Tell me in the comments. Have you noticed power lines sagging more during hot afternoons? Then we have conductor spacing. If two wires swing too close during heavy winds, they might flash over and cause faults. To avoid that, proper spacing is maintained depending on voltage and weather conditions. Lighter wires actually swing more than heavy ones, so they need greater spacing. That's why the design is not uniform everywhere. And finally, conductor vibration. This is really interesting. When the wind flows across a wire, it makes the conductor vibrate. If you've ever plucked a guitar string, you know how it starts vibrating and producing sound. Similar things happen to transmission lines, and if these vibrations are not controlled, they can eventually damage the conductor or the clamps. Sometimes this vibration looks like a dancing motion, and engineers even call it dancing conductors. Have you ever seen lines shaking or dancing during a storm? Drop a comment if you did. So that's the beauty of mechanical principles in transmission line design. It's not just about electricity, it's also about balancing height, sag, clearance, spacing, and even wind dancing. Before we end, a small request, if you found this explanation interesting, do give this video a like, share it with your friends who love engineering, and don't forget to subscribe to Electrology for more such simple yet powerful explanations. Also, you'll see a thanks button and a join button below this video. The thanks button helps you appreciate our work and with the join button, you can become a channel member for exclusive content and early access. Your support keeps us motivated to bring high quality educational content for you.